The Delta variant of COVID-19 is also causing a surge in cases across Europe. And now several countries in the region are reimposing strict measures to stop the spread. Last week, the French government introduced a mandatory COVID pass to be presented at most leisure gatherings with more than 50 people. The pass shows whether a person has been vaccinated or has tested negative for the virus. But French President Macron is now reconsidering the new rules in the face of protests against the restrictions. Joining us now is Poland's former foreign minister and minister of defense, Radek Sikorski. He is a member of the European Parliament and the chair of a delegation from the parliament that, parliament that meets regularly with its counterparts in the U.S. House of Representatives. And it's very good to have you on the show, Radek. Um, I guess my first question is, are there differences in the challenges that Europe is facing in terms of trying to beat back the COVID virus and the Delta variant and other variations of it versus the U.S.? Are you seeing any uh, differences in, in approach and reaction to the approach? The proportions of vaccinations and I think of casualties are quite similar. And we also have the challenge of some people not wanting to vaccinate. They should remember then the, that the anti-vax movement was boosted uh, by uh, Russian trolling operations. This was an active measure mm. uh, to uh, set us against science, set us against our governments uh, to sow uh, discord and confusion. So it seems to me that there's actually similarities in that the fight against COVID is actually a fight against disinformation? Uh, partly, yes, because this uh, has the, the, these irrational uh, tendencies in our societies have been strongly uh, supported uh, by those who wish ill to our democracy, to, to our Western way of life. And in this case, I'm afraid it's been very successful. Mm -hmm. You uh, had the first meeting of the transatlantic legislators that I described in the lead in to you. Uh, tell us uh, what you learned, uh, what was uh, the biggest source of discussion and how COVID, um, the fight against this pandemic, uh, is, is uh, impacting the security around the world. We met Speaker Pelosi. We had meetings at the State Department, the National Security Council, and, uh, and uh, exchanges with um, uh, Jim Costa, the, uh, the, the co-chair, uh, and uh, other congressmen and senators. And yes, this is the, the most urgent issue. And here, I think we've been able to help each other because, remember, these vaccines have been uh, Pfizer, for example, American company, but Turkish immigrants in Germany who've invented this. Um, so mm -hmm. a remarkable success that the vaccine, uh, vaccines were invented so quickly. But now we need to persuade on both sides of the Atlantic uh, those who are skeptical. And I think we now have the wealth of data to persuade people that vaccination works, that it saves lives. And this is a common challenge. We discussed issues like Nord Stream. We discussed challenges to democracy. You've had your uh, heart attack on, on 6th of January. We have, um, mm -hmm. we have our challenges in some of the member states. Um, uh, of course, China was very high on the agenda. We need to stick together. Uh, Europe and, uh, and the United States. We've created the Trade and Technology Council, which will monitor um, investments, uh, standards uh, and regulations to do with our relationship with China. Hey, Radek, certainly China was a flashpoint in the President Biden's first overseas trip uh, last month. We went to Europe for the G7 and so on. But on another economic matter, can you give us an update as to you just did about the vaccine, but the state of sort of the European economy right now, some of its member states, like, for instance, this morning in the U.S., uh, applications for jobless aid rose. You know, the, though the economy has shown some signs of improvement, it's certainly not all the way there. There are still real pockets uh, where people are struggling. What is the economic fallout you're seeing from the pandemic in Europe? And, you know, in terms of it is particularly centered in certain nations. Uh, we don't know how this debt that we've taken on will play out. Uh, but Europe has already uh, passed what we hope will pass also here, which is to say a huge recovery in investment uh, program, two trillion euros. Um, and it's going to be spent very quickly on uh, on improving our health systems 
on a cyber and digital transformation and on energy transformation. For the first time, the European Union has taken out 750 billion uh, euros of common debt, and this money is already reaching member states. So I, uh, I want to ask you, you said we have to stick together uh, on a number of levels, but especially against disinformation, uh, also these cyber attacks. Uh, what can the European Union do? What can you do to stick together against them pertaining to the sources, potentially China, most probably Russia? What aggressively can be done to push back against these before they become um, what they already are, which is modern warfare, and do unspeakable damage to our democracies? Well, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization has for the first time issued a statement that cyber attacks are attacks on NATO. Um, Europe is not a military superpower, unlike you, but we are a regulatory superpower. We have the largest and richest uh, common market on Earth, and we can regulate how people interact with that market, how people use the data of our citizens. And we need to do this uh, because the, the Internet, tech are all wonderful things. But as we are discovering, um, they also have some downsides and our, our, citizen, our citizens are demanding action. And the European Parliament will be at the forefront of this. All right. Uh, member of the European Parliament, Radek Sikorsky, thank you. Say hello to Anne. Um, we appreciate you. your being on the, sh on the show you, this morning. Kat.